reading the Word of God, we got a very long Bible reading. Three of our believers will be helping us, Lydia, Noila, and Joe. We'll have the reading of the scriptures. Daniel chapter 9, from verse 1 to 21. Bible reading is taken from Daniel chapter 9, from verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the sea of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish seventy years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes and our fathers and to all the people of the land. Bible reading continues. The reading continues from verses 7 to 13. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces. As at this day, to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off, to all the countries whither thou hast driven them, because of their trespasses that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face. To our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he said before us by his servants the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he had confirmed his works, which he spake against us, and against our judges, that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven had not been done as had been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. The Bible reading continues. From verse 14. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth. For we obey not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten thee renowned. As at this, at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly, O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from the city of Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon the sanctuary that is desolate. For the Lord's sake, O my God, incline thy ear, and hear upon thy eyes, and behold our desolations, and the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear, O God, forgive our Lord, hearken and do, differ not for thy own sake, O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin, 
and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yeah, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Here ends the reading. Verse 20. While I was speaking and praying. While I was speaking and... Verse 21. A. While I was speaking in... While I was speaking in prayer. The caption for this morning meditation is While thus speaking in prayer. Thus speaking in prayer. Now while he was praying, the answer came to him. While thus praying. So before I could get into the word of God, I want to give a brief introduction about the background of this prayer. It was the desolation of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city of God. The mountain of holiness. Beautiful for situation. It is destroyed. The desolation of Jerusalem was very heavy. The palaces were burnt. The sanctuary was totally demolished. The king, the princess, the people were taken into captivity. Daniel was taken. It was a great pain to them. And Daniel as a prophet, he has read the books of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 10, Jeremiah verse 25, 11, there were prophecies that it is ordained for them to have this uh, desolation for 70 years. So now almost 68 years have passed by. No sign of restoration was probably Daniel was at that time, 85 or so, 90 of the nine years. It was very grievous in the sight of Daniel. So when the time was approaching for the prophecy to be fulfilled, Daniel prayed very earnestly. So when Daniel was speaking in prayer, the answer came. While thus I was speaking in prayer, thus, how was his prayer? How could that prayer bring an answer? Glory be to the Lord's holy. Very briefly, I'm going to share with this church five salient points I could see in his prayer. Number one, setting his face to the Lord God. Setting his face to the Lord God. Number two, fixing our relationship with the Lord God. Fixing our relationship with the Lord God. Number three, making confessions. What are the confessions we should make? We see as I develop the message. Making confessions to the Lord. Number five, praying and pleading. Praying and pleading to the Lord. Number five, maintaining a glorious hope on the Lord. All through your prayer, Maintaining a glorious hope on the Lord. Number one, set your face unto the Lord. This is a great desolation. The Lord has promised the restoration. But 68 years have passed away. There is absolutely no sign of restoration. The government has changed from the Babylonian Empire. Now it is the Medo Persian Empire. But we don't see any sign. That there could be a restoration. A more terrible government. Daniel had visions. The Babylonian Empire was golden. And the empire that could succeed the Babylonian Empire would be of silver. Would be of silver. It is more stronger than gold and less glorious than gold. That the empire has succeeded. So this new government, will that give freedom or not? Daniel could not know. But he prayed. Pray for the restoration of Jerusalem, God's city. So in verse 3 we read, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication. To seek God by prayer and supplication, we have to set our face unto our God. What does it actually mean that set our face unto God? It denotes the fixedness of our thoughts. Setting our face unto God means it denotes the fixedness of our thoughts, the firmness of our faith, the firmness of our faith and the favor of His devotion. 
So three things are very important. We have to fix our thoughts on Him. We should firm on our faith that the Lord will answer our prayers. And uh, if He will be very favorable to His devote. When I ask Him, I'm His child. When I pray unto Him, He will answer me. His favor will be up. Your confidence must be on His favor. In another place the psalmist says, I set God before me. I set God before me. These two things are very, very important. So set God before us. Set ourselves. Set our face to Him. It is not just saying a prayer. It is not repeating a prayer. Here we are not going to learn a prayer. We are going to learn a successful prayer. How to pray. How to pray. So setting your face. When you set your face towards God, the posture, your attitude is very important. The city was in a desolate condition. So you can't jump and dance and play. So the situation is very different. He fostered. He was not wearing a very gay, bright, merry cloth. He put on some sackcloth. And as a sign of mourning, he put ashes on his body. And he prayed. Fasting and praying is very, very important. In these days, there are people, they mock at fasting. So they, it means they mock at Jesus. Jesus fasted and disciples fasted and prayed. I don't have time to explain everything. They misquote and they, uh, a word of Jesus. When the bridegroom is with you, will the friends of the bridegroom fast? But in the same passage, Jesus said, a time will come that my disciples will fast. He didn't say his disciples will not fast. Does it mean that Jesus is not with his disciples? Paul is write, uh, writing about fasting. In much fasting is Peter is writing about fasting. There is no his preacher. They are not speaking against fasting. They are speaking against the Bible. They are speaking against Jesus. They are speaking against Paul. They are speaking against Peter. They are destroying the church by removing a tool that is very, very powerful and essential in Christian living. There are different types of fastings. Now, I don't want to get to, but the mortification of his body lay in ashes that speaks about how much he conformed himself with the desolation of Jerusalem. So when you pray for God to remove your desolation, when you pray for somebody who is suffering, you must be able to identify your spirit and letter. Then you can set your face, your thoughts can be focused. When he was sitting for prayer, it was not a merry moment. It was not singing hallelujahs. It was not dancing. It was a very serious business. He knew how important that business was. Many times he has stood before king. He has spoken to kings. Now he is standing before the king of kings. For him it is a greater business. He is going to speak to the king. He is going to speak to the king of kings. So he must kneel down. My dear brother, my dear son. Jesus knelt and prayed. Paul knelt and prayed. Paul is right. My dear brother, my dear sister. The first thing, setting your face to God. Your very posture, the thoughtful, everything is very important in setting your face. And second thing, when you are praying to God, that relationship is very important. What is the relationship you have got with this God? You are talking, who is He to you? In this passage, in verse 4 He says, I pray unto the Lord my God, not this God of Israel, my God, my shepherd. So a personal relationship is established. In verse 8, 68, 15 he says, O Lord, our God. Verse 18, verse 16, O Lord. Verse 17, O our God. Verse 19, three times, O my God, O my God, O my God. Again, uh, verse 19, O oh Lord, my dear brother, my dear sister, our Father, is not our Father which art in heaven, our Heavenly Father. It is not Param Mandala Kirangal Pida, Inga Vinu Lahat Tandaye, Inga Paranoha Appa, Param Appa Ve. Everybody, Paramapa, 
So you must have this personal relationship with God. That's the second thing, very, very important. You should establish the personal relationship with God. Number three, we read in verse four, and I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession. In Tamil you see power decay, it's not just power decay. Arikai Pandi. Arikai Pandi. What is that confession he made? Or what do we mean by confession? Confession is not just in the Catholic Church. We go to the Father and say blah, 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 blah. That alone is not confession. Confession is the language of our own convictions. We are convinced of something. When we give utterance to our conviction, it is confession. Let me repeat it. Confession is a language of our own conviction and that which we ourselves do heartily subscribe to. What do we mean by confession? It is the language of my conviction which we ourselves do heartily, wholeheartedly subscribe to. Subscribe to whatever we say, we subscribe to what we say wholeheartedly. So what you are convinced and what you speak out and wholeheartedly subscribe to it, that is called confession. So he prayed to the Lord, Lord my God, and made my confession. So he gave utterance to what he was fully convinced and wholeheartedly he subscribed to what he said. That's confession. We have some Roman Catholic friends here. When I say confession, confession don't think that just going to the Father and say something, Lord, I did this, I, Father, I did this, Father, I did that. It's a, it's a, it's a language of your conviction. And all how do you subscribe to? So in this passage, we see three different types of confession. Number one, in verse one, and in a few other places, he confessed God's majesty. That's the language of his conviction. He's convinced of the majesty of God. And he gave utterance to his conviction. Verse four, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him. Keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So in your prayer, for your prayer to be effectual and thus you are speaking in prayer for the answer to come. You should be convinced who that God is, what that God can do. When He has made a covenant with you, He will keep that covenant. Not only keeping the covenant, He will be merciful also. When we love Him, He will be merciful to us. As the Father will have mercy on His children, He will have mercy on us. We should, in verse 9, He says, To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness. So when you pray, you should understand God better. It's not just blah, 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 blah. So he is merciful. I mean, our God belong mercies and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled again, though we have sinned, though we have trespassed, mercies belong to him. Forgiveness belong to him. Confess that. If you are very serious that the Lord should bring a solution to your problem, number one, you set your face to the Lord. Let's focus your thoughts on the Lord. Number two, confess. In confess, number one, very, very important, confess the greatness, the majesty of God. Number two, you find it very difficult to do. Confess your sin. Confess your sin. Thus speak in verse five, Five and six. We have sinned and committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from the precepts and from thy judgment. Confess it. I have sinned. I have missed the mark. The literal meaning of the word sin means miss the mark. 
Mr. Bullseye, I'm Mr. Bullseye. Confess it to the Lord. Confess it to the Lord. I sinned and I have committed iniquity. What is orderly? What is I have done again? I committed iniquity and I have done deadly. The wickedness. The Tamil word will explain that better. Dun mark. Dun mark. Mark means way. In Tamil when we add the prefix do, it speaks about the negativity. Chaydi dun chaydi. Mark. I have done wickedly. I walked in the wrong way. I walked in the wrong way. And I have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgment. From what the Bible says. I departed from that. The Bible says, keep the Sabbath. A day holy unto us. One day. You depart from God's prince. You depart from God's prince. We have seen in verse 6. Neither have we hearkened unto the servant, the prophet, spoke in thy name to our king, our princess, our father, and to all the people. Not only we sinned, not only we have done iniquity, not only we walked wickedly, not only we rebelled against thy law. In an explicit way, you were servant, the pastors. They spoke in the name of you from the scriptures by the leading of the Holy Spirit. He never listened to it. We very easily said, never again and He confessed. Our kings, our princes, our fathers. He confessed to the Lord. My Abba has done it. My Abba has done it. The father took the children on a Sunday. Just to allow to, he said, oh, this is the only holiday. Allah and Allah, Kala and the church paid down, that's the one who in my people. A father has done it. A father has misled us. A father has not listened to our parents, our mothers. They have not listened to your word. They have not listened to the words of the pastors. You have said, those who spoke to us in your name. In verse 9 in the last part, he says, We are rebelled against you. Verse 10, Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. Not only the scriptures, not only what the pastor said, even the Lord spoke to us. Once he said, The Lord spoke to me, I should pay tithe. The Lord spoke to me that I should not do like this. The Lord spoke to me, I should not wear this. The Lord spoke to me that I should keep the Lord's day. So many things he said, The Lord spoke to me, the Lord spoke to me. What happened to that? Hello? Neither have you obeyed the voice of the Lord of God. You said God spoke to you. Even you are not obeying to what God has spoken to you. The voice of the Lord of our God. To walk in his laws. Which he said before us by his servants, the prophets. How did he speak to me? By his word. How did he show his word to me? Through his servant. The pastor showed it from the Bible. Amma, the Bible that way. Swami and the best man. What happened to that conviction? That's why you are suffering. Confess that you didn't even hearken to the voice of the Lord who spoke to you by the Lord through his servants. Verse 19, I'm sorry, verse 15. We have sinned. We have done wicked, wickedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. It's not a question whether Daniel sinned or not. Now the family is suffering. Maybe the sin of the father, sin of the mother, somebody in the family. But Daniel, you confess it. And we sin. It's a national calamity. It's a calamity. It's not Daniel's sin. It's not Ezekiel's sin. The nation sinned. Everybody is suffering. Because of the sin of the father, the whole family is suffering. Because of the sin of the mother, the whole family is suffering. Because of the sin of the sin of a boy in the family, the whole family is suffering. My dear brother, my dear sister, we have sinned. Be and be carefully. In verse 16, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. It's all because of our sin. My dear brother, my dear sister, Romans chapter 7 verse 30. We must be able to see sin as sin. It is the work of the Lord. It is work of a true, sincere servant of God. 
to show to the people sin is a sin don't give any other name to sin for a premarital relationship for an extramarital relationship don't give a name it's a friend it's only friendship don't call fornication a friendship don't call adultery a friendship don't call drunkenness drinking don't call drunkenness drinking don't call lie by any other name all liars are will go to hell all liars will go to hell if you justify lie na summa sanne varayattu sanne in the name of jesus from this pulpit i tell you if you speak lie you will go to hell nobody can escape sin is a sin na summa sanne varayattu sanne all liars will go to hell. so confess your sin and confess the majesty of god confess your sins and number 3 confess god's right say that god is always right god is always right in verses 7 and 8 he says o lord our righteous o lord righteousness belongeth unto thee you are right we are suffering like this today because you are right o lord righteousness belongeth unto thee but unto us confusion of face as at this uh, as at this day to the men of judah and to the inhabitants of jerusalem and to all israel that are near and that are far off to all the countries to all the whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass they have trespassed against thee you are right suffer because of us the people of judah the people of jerusalem all the people of israel they suffer because of their sin the whole family is suffering because of sin Daniel probably didn't sin. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego probably Ezekiel didn't sin. Zerubbabel didn't sin. Ezra didn't sin. Nehemiah didn't sin. They all are suffering in Babylon. They all were taken into captivity because of your sin. Your children are suffering. Your family is suffering. The whole Jerusalem is suffering. It's not because of sin of Daniel. The sin of the nation. Daniel is in captivity. Nehemiah is in captivity. Zerubbabel in captivity. They are by the rivers of Babylon. They are by the rivers of Babylon not because they sin, because the king sin, because the nation sin, because the family has sin. Verse six. O Lord, to us belong the confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we sinned against Thee. God is right. Verse eleven, eleven to fourteen. Yea. All Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey the voice. Therefore, because of his sin, curse is poured upon. A family is cursed: sickness, fighting, poverty, misunderstanding, quarrelling, crying, weeping, gnashing up the seeds of hell, the curses of the law. because we sin because we sin therefore the curse is poured upon us what that is written in the law of moses the servant of god because we have sinned against <coughs> because we sinned against god all the curses written in the law will come upon us. all the curses written in the law will come upon us. because god is righteous he has written that if you do this it will come to pass and if he is righteous you do this that will come pass to us and he has confirmed his words He has confirmed this. A liar will go to hell. He will confirm this. Do not forget it. He has confirmed. He has confirmed this word. Speak against us and against our judges. The judges by bringing upon us a great evil. By bringing this great evil in our life, he has proved that. By bringing this great evil in our life, he has proved that he is righteous. For under the whole heaven had not been done. as it been done upon jerusalem verse 30 as it is written in the law of all this evil is come upon us all sickness all problems it's come upon us as it is written in the law yet may we not have prayed before the lord of our god that we might turn from our iniquities and understand the truth that is righteous today we are suffering it is because of our sin So we will turn from our sin and understand His truth. Verse fourteen. Therefore, hath the Lord watched upon the evil. He considered. He weighed what all the evils Robert has done. Where all he has sinned against God. 
Water the Lord he has broken. He weighed about the evil that we are committed and brought this curse upon us. For the Lord our God is like, why, why, why has he done this? Why has he allowed this curse in our family? Because our God is righteous. This curse has come to your family. Because he is righteous in all his works, even in our loving curse, which he do yet, but we obeyed not his voice. Because we obeyed not his voice. In Leviticus chapter 26, he says, I allow some curse or something, this, this will come upon you. And if you don't obey, I will increase it seven times. The punishment. If you don't still obey it, I will increase it seven more times. So seven, seven, forty-nine. If you don't obey, I will increase it seven more times. That is 343. The third time, fourth time he says, still you don't obey, I will increase it seven more times. That is 2401 times. Will you stop with that? No, no. Already you have got sufferings. And still you don't obey seven times. Still you don't obey seven more times. Still you don't obey seven more times. And the fifth time, seven more times, that your sufferings will be increased by 16,807 times. He will not allow leave you. He is righteous God. He is righteous God. If you turn to him in this first problem itself, it's okay. He loves you. He has given his life for you. He will allow these sufferings because he is righteous. Seven times, seven more times, seven more times, seven more times, seven more times. 16,807. In Joel chapter 1 and 2, the Lord says, I send a great army against you. Army of enemies. Army of problems. Great army. They come like panker worm. There's uh, palmer worms. Pulu. Pulu. That will eat some leaves. Some destruction. If you don't obey, caterpillar will come. The palmer worm will become a caterpillar. Caterpillar must get a puchi. But your pulu, if a puchi, it will eat some more leaves. God permit us, caterpillars. Even then you don't listen, God will allow canker worms. That will eat in Tamil, pachakri. Pachakri nuts are pachakri, small, tender, tender locusts, kutti locusts. If you don't listen to it, God will allow locusts. Caterpillar, canker worms, then the Lord will allow locusts, destroy completely. It's all because he is righteous. It's all because he is righteous. You should not play with God. I told you, I showed you from Jeremiah chapter 16. Jeremiah chapter 16, verses 16 and 18. Behold, I will send for, I will send for many fishes, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. First he allows some fishes, they will have some hooks, the fishing hook, or they put the net, and they shall fish them, and after will I send for Many hunters. They will come with the arrow. I will send hunters. First fishers. I will send hunters. They shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and from and out of the holes of the rocks. You can't run, you can't escape. They will hunt you. Just go home and read up to verse 18 to save time and going fast. Because 
we have sinned. God is righteous. Confess God's majesty. Confess your sins. And confess God is right. So number one, set your face to God. Number three, establish your relationship with God. Number three, confess. Confess God's majesty. Confess your sins. And confess God is right. Number four, when you pray, pray with supplication. Pray with pleading. About Jacob we read, before God could bless Jacob. In the book of Genesis we read that he wrestled against God. In the book of Hosea, how was he wrestling? Anand Kenji Poravid. And every day he was wrestling. He was wrestling with his own life. He was wrestling with his own life. Yes. 
standing on our righteousness, but we are pleading for your mercies. Verse 19, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. It's not only really listen to my prayer, do something. Do something. And not for thy own sake, but may God. Differ not for thy own sake. For the city, for thy city and thy people, people called by thy name. People called by thy name. What you have mercy on us, O Lord. We are suffering for our sin. Today we are turning unto you. My dear brother, my dear sister, this is the prayer with which we prayed in our fasting prayer. It was really wonderful. There was the working day. It's a very short notice. It's a very surprise. More than 100 people were here for prayer. And prayer was very powerful, very meaningful. This is the passage on which we are praying. And today I thought that like, the Lord wanted me to bring that as a message. One of the most difficult topics I ever dealt with. As I'm preaching, I am reminded, today is a global prayer day. It's God's plan, I didn't plan. Global prayer day, the Lord has given a message on prayer. Not just now it comes to my mind. The Lord is giving a message on prayer. It's not that I planned it because it's a global prayer day. Number five, pray with a glorious hope. Daniel chapter 9 verses 15 and 16. Daniel chapter 9 verses 15 and 16. And now, O Lord of account, thou hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and hast gotten, gotten the renown as at this day. We have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, because I beseech thee, let them anger and thy fury be turned away from the city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain. Because for our sins and for our iniquities of fathers, Jerusalem, etc., etc. The concept here is, you can make a note and go home and read it. I don't have time to read Jeremiah chapter 16 verses 14 and 15. He says, Lord, you brought people out of the land of Egypt. With your mighty hand, with your mighty hand, you brought people from the land of Egypt. It's not because they are good. You heard their cry. You heard their voice. They're suffering because of the task. You brought them out of that. God is not changing. If you could bring us out of Egypt, Lord, we are your children. It's all the more easier for you. No, to bring out out of that. Out of this present calamity. You saved us from sin. You brought us out of my clay. In a wonderful way, you lifted us up. We have become your children. Your city. We are called by your name. Now we are suffering because of our sin. If you can bring us out of Egypt, now can't deliver from this calamity. Surely you will deliver you. We are your own. We have got a covenant relationship with you. When we were in Egypt, there was no covenant relationship with you. Even when you can help us, bring us out of Egypt, how much more it is certain from this present calamity also, you would tell you. That's why I was, that's why I was the answer. For the answer of the Lord, five salient points in prayer I bring to you. Number one, set your face. To number, establish your relationship. God will not listen to the prayer of the Establish your relationship with God. Number three, make your confession meaningful. Confess the majesty of God. Confess your sins. Confess that you are suffering because God is righteous. Don't ask her. On the way again the pretender. On the way again the question. It is God's righteousness that we are suffering. Confess it. Number four. Don't pray with our record. Don't shout and say, Lord, I command your hand to deliver me. I don't see the arrogance in the prayer of Daniel. That's not faith. Daniel, plead. Glory to all, all 
Catholic nature. Yeah, it is your righteousness that we suffer. It is your righteousness that you will deliver us. Because you are God of mercy. Show mercy. Show mercy. You have a glorious hope. And God has once delivered us from sin. Will not he cleanse us from this wicked? Will he not bring me out of this calamity? He loves me. I am his child. I am called by his name. He'll have mercy on me. With this confidence, thus while you are praying, the answer will surely come. Shall we just pray? Dear Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you for the word that you have sent to your people. Grant to us this prayer, O Master God, this prayer, where we will be able to set our face towards you, where we will be able to establish a relationship with you, where we could confess your majesty. Our sin and your righteousness will help us to pray and plead for your mercies. Lord, we pray with when you have delivered your people from mighty clay out of Egypt, how much more it is certain that from this bondage you can deliver. Bless your people. Send your people back home with their heavenly benediction. When they are praying, Speaking and let your answer appear in. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' matchless name, we are me. Set time for prayer.